Um, introducing Ellen Pliskin, our moderator to, for today's panel, which is called Is It Worth It? Um, take it away, Ellen. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, the topic is, um, as we said, is it worth it? Uh, we want to discuss a little bit the experiences pro and con of exhibiting your work outside the New York area. Um, we want to talk about the costs, the shipping, um, attending the openings, uh, the publicity and the possible sales and the growth for you as an artist. So that was our topic. And um, I asked people to join who had those experiences. And today you're going to hear from Monroe Hada, uh, Gail Winberry, uh, Sandra Mac Valencia, and Monty Epstein in that order. So the first one is Monroe Hada, uh, who's going to talk on customs and shipping. And by the way, I'm in the midst of doing a shipping and customs to Vancouver. So I'm very, want to hear Monroe, what you have to say. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I lived in uh, London for over 10 years and developed a good relationship with the gallery there. And I continued to show in England as well as different places outside of New York in the United States and occasionally in Europe and France or Germany. So I do a lot of shipping. And um, I do need to keep my finances in order and to make money for my art. And um, so I'm pretty careful about what the pricing is when I ship things around. Um, uh, so the gallery I have in England really only likes large paintings. I mean, we're talking about five or six feet, which I love to do. So that all works out fine, except that there's the problem of shipping. Now, shipping overseas, I recommend DHL and FedEx and nobody else. The reason is you need to get through customs. Every country's a little different, but I have had work held up for months in customs. And uh, it's you can't get to a person to talk to them. It's very frustrating. So I would recommend DHL or FedEx. Um, to start the process, with a large painting, you're going to have to end up with a crate. So I wrap it in plastic and then I use the pink foam boards, well, pink or purple, whatever you call them, that you can get at um, Home Depot. And my husband and I cut out um, a box shape and we form a box around however many paintings I'm sending. And it just actually, we've tried gluing, but taping works the best. Just really tape it down tight. And uh, then to get the crate made, I have a local lumber yard, which makes me crates for $150 to $200, which is low in this day and age. So they come and pick up my pink foam package and take it over to their lumber yard and build a crate out of what is um, uh, non-bug um, wood. So there's a special title for it, but basically it's wood that's been debugged and stamped that it has no bugs in it. And this, you can't ship overseas if you don't use that kind of wood. So I get it all set up like that. And FedEx or DHL picks it up. Now I send my paintings as unfinished paintings. And um, this is a little bit sly, I will admit, because who knows when a painting's finished. But when I send it as an unfinished painting, I'm sending it for the price of the materials. So maybe the materials are a couple hundred dollars and maybe you're gonna sell it for $10,000. So really you wanna pay 20%, uh, which is what customs are in England, of the materials rather than the sales price, if you possibly can. So <clears throat> um, when using FedEx, they have two um, special um, services. One is called Great Rates and called My Quote. And I think Great Rates is for overseas and My Quote is for the US. And you can hound them. And what happens is if you get a moment when they have a shipment and they have a little extra space, they'll send yours and often for incredibly low prices. So we do tend to wait around till they have a great rate price. Um, 
using DHL, I, which I've just started doing. Um, when I called DHL before, they said I had to have an LLC and my company is an, an LLC. So I, I just called again recently and uh, that requirement seems to have been lifted. And I had to join DHL, which didn't cost anything. And um, so now I'm a member of DHL and I sent one of these big crates. I mean, it was really big, like 70 by 70 by 10 inches. I sent it through DHL for $400 to England. But this is because like I said I did a lot of shipping. I might not be able to keep quite that um, great quote in the future. But um, when people quote you, you know, like $1,600, $1,800, just keep looking. Because I sent things through FedEx for six to $800 also. These are big crates. Now, if you're just sending something small, I usually use um, mirror boxes. They're double boxes. So there's a little box inside, then a big box. And the mirror boxes kind of work like the foam does for me. It really protects things and you can get them from Home Depot or uh, what's it called? The one online. Um, you you line you line thank you you line <laughs> you line is a big supporter of trump well they do great boxes whatever <laughs> <laughs> um so i'd be happy to ask answer any other questions but i i have kind of a system i do this all the time i send whole shows to cities like uh portland oregon and um, denver colorado and um I do this, um, this is how I make money and support myself. So uh, it's not just a frivolous thing with, well, uh, that's my purpose. Other people have different purposes. That's all I have to say. Okay, that, that's great. What we're gonna do is um, have each speaker just speak about five minutes. And then afterwards, we're gonna throw it open for some Q and A, okay? Uh, rather than okay. going directly to the person. Okay. So um, thanks, Monroe. That was really good. I needed to do that. And I'm sending my thing DHL. will be picked up tomorrow. Okay. Uh, Gail Winber. Yeah. Nice uh, to see everyone. Right. She's going to um, talk uh, about uh, opening yourself up. We were talked about this before and participating worldwide and the opportunities that it's given her. So thank you, Gail. You're welcome. Like many people here, I've shown around the world. Um, I'm not going to be talking about New Jersey because that's a completely separate topic, which we should have as a topic showing in New Jersey. But I've shown in Israel, in Mexico, in Europe, and then throughout the United States, mostly the East Coast. And Monroe, thank you, because I have paid a lot of money for a wonderful shipper and crater in um, Brooklyn but it was much more expensive. So I'll keep your ideas in mind. Um, in terms of opening myself up, I think what's been important to me is to really assess what are my priorities as a professional artist? What do I really want? And it's very important to me, not, I'm less concerned about the monetary aspect in part because I have a day job and in part because my work does sell. So my priority is a little bit different from Monroe's. I really want my work to be out in the world. I think it's important. I think my work is something that's important to communicate. I also have a background as an academic. I used to work at Rutgers and teach. And I want my work to be in venues where I'm at a university or I'm in a museum where there's teaching along with the actual exhibition. Realistically, my chances of being in the Whitney are very, very small. So I'm also willing to look at museums that are in other parts of the world or other parts of the country. And I'll be showing in a museum in Vermont, I'll have a solo exhibition in the winter um, coming up. I also see showing outside of the New York area and I've shown more outside of New York than I have in New York, um, expands my collector base. And I think collectors like, particularly in Europe, I think collectors like knowing that you've shown in other parts of Europe. So I've shown in Germany and I had some recent sales in London. I think there's a connection between that. The other thing that is a priority for me and many of us talked about it in our small group, pre-pandemic, I love to travel. 
and traveling with my art for a show like Fran is going to do and like many of, of us have done is very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what it's going to be like now. I mean, it's, I, Vermont is fine outside of the country. I'm not sure. But there's also some cons. And I had a show during the pandemic in Pittsburgh. It was a solo show. The cons cost, financial cost, which Monroe was talking about, and also a time cost because showing outside of the area that we live in requires a lot more time. Um, I drove 25 pieces in the pandemic. I rented a van in order to do that. It was a beautiful venue. It was a beautiful gallery. I sold one piece for $400. I did not cover my costs at all and stayed in the hotel for a couple of days during the pandemic. So my question, the benefits, it's on my CV. I have wonderful photos of a great exhibition in a beautiful gallery. Was it worth it? I'm not sure. I recently had a painting put on the cover of a journal and the editor was from the University of Pittsburgh. I have no idea if there's any connection, but every show that I've done outside of New Jersey and New York, it's opened something else up. But there's certain takeaways, there's cultural differences, and that's important for us as artists to be conscious of. For example, I, and I know there's some other people here have shown in Italy. It's not uncommon in Italy that the curator will ask you to gift a painting or gift several paintings in exchange for having the exhibition. In Germany, what I have noticed is that there's a kind of precision and perfectionism at a level that I've never experienced in the United States. So I was showing in this gorgeous medieval building with one other artist, they had invited me to show with them. And it took days to install the show. And I finally just accepted that there was a level of attention to detail that was different from what I was used to in the States. And that I was just gonna accept that that's the way things were being done. I have also noticed a fair amount of sticker shock. For example, in the Pittsburgh show, the curator would say things like, well, Pittsburgh collectors don't want to um, pay New York prices. I was not willing to alter my prices. No matter where I go, I keep the prices consistent. But when I showed in Mexico, I brought art books that were maybe about three to $400 max and people were surprised at the cost. So be aware if you're showing in Finland and your regular prices, I don't know, 300 or $3,000, people may be surprised by that, but we need to keep the prices consistent. That's my sense. I recently learned something that I hope will be helpful. It was very helpful to me and that's about budgets. Universities, museums, and sometimes commercial galleries have budgets that they're not gonna tell you about initially. And the curator of the Zimmerle Museum said, ask them. So I was in a show in Rhode Island and I had a very large piece. It was on Sintra, it was heavy. It was during the pandemic, so I didn't wanna drive it. Shipping was very expensive. So she said, ask them what their budget is. I asked them what the budget was, they laughed. It was a nonprofit gallery. But instead they said, but you know what? We show work on a huge TV screen. Send us a really good digital image and we'll show your piece and someone from China. So I'm really encouraged at this point to ask the venues, can they help with? And I have a, a gallery right now, which is gonna pay for framing and pay for some of the transportation. So if there's any advice, ask the venue, do you have any, any resources available to help with framing or to help with shipping? When I showed in Santa Fe, they paid the way out. I had to pay. If nothing sold, I had to pay the way back. The other thing which we talked about in my group a little bit is there's these magical moments that happen when you travel with your art in foreign places. And there's two things that I just want to share. And I hope I'm not going over time. Yeah, actually, I'm just going to, yeah, because I see that. Am I? All right. Yeah, so I want to get the other two speakers. <laughs> magical moments. It's, Okay. Just the word right. magical moments. I like that. I like to leave that at that. Okay. So thank you very much. You're okay, welcome. Gail. Um, the next speaker is Sandra, Sandra Mac Valencia, and she has an actual experience also in uh, showing in Santa Fe, uh, in San Antonio. Sorry. San Antonio. Hi. Hi, everybody. So I want to share my experience of showing with an arte gallery in San Antonio in Texas. 
I have been with the gallery for almost five years now, and I have had four solo shows. And I agree with uh, Monroe and with Gail that um, I, I summarize everything to like three cons and three pros. I'm going to start with the bad news, the cons, and I agree. Uh, it's, there is a, the first one would be cost. It's way more expensive. The shipping, also um, going for the event, paying for a plane ticket, hotel, meals, uh, everything. So it is way more expensive. That is one of the cons. The other one is time. Uh, usually when, uh, in my personal experience, when I have a solo show, I have to schedule myself to be completely done with the artwork at least two months prior to the opening. And that's why, um, that is because I need at least two months to coordinate with my photographer. I also have to coordinate with, an, with a band, with a, an actual track, an art shuttle to take the paintings to, to Texas. And when that happens, it's not like going to FedEx or DHL where you know, you probably have shipments like every day. When you are um, uh, scheduling a van, you have to pretty much you're subjected to their timing. So, so uh, you have to plan far in advance so you don't get any headaches or bad surprises. Um, and besides cost and time, the other con that I find is that you're not in your city. So during the opening, you are in a foreign place. It's, it's a different environment. Your friends are not going to be with you in the opening. Your family is not going to be there. So the pressure is different. There is a different level of anxiety. Uh, there is not that reassurance of seeing familiar faces during the opening. So those would be the main cons that I, that I have had in my experience. Now with the good news, the, the three pros that I see, the first one and most obvious one is that you are exposing your work to a new audience. And that is always good news. In my personal experience, I have found a new, uh, a new audience of collectors that I have developed some relationships with. Also, it's an opportunity for new press in a different city. And it is always good to, to see what kind of reaction the work has in a different city. Um, I have noticed, and this is just a personal perception, that here in New York, we are, um, there is more of a tendency of being more intellectual and a little more serious and uptight about our, the approach, especially in galleries, the approach with the work. And uh, I see that in San Antonio, it's a little more light and more whimsical, and, and they tend to look more at the aesthetics and the color and the, what kind of feeling they get from the work. And I'm generalizing, but that is like what I have perceived, but, but it's good. I'm not saying one is good and the other one is bad. I'm just saying that it's great to see that uh, the same artwork could have like all those kind of reactions. So that is one of the pros. The other one is that um, it has exposed me to a new audience and it has broken stereotypes. I have to confess that the first time I showed in San Antonio I was very intimidated. I had Googled the gallery and I saw the audience that they had in the openings were totally not in my circle. They looked like strangers to me. They looked too fancy. They looked too rich. They, they were definitely not people that I am um, used to, to interact with. So I was very worried. I was like, I'm not going to fit in. What am I going to talk to with these people? And, and once I got there, it was great. It was fluid, it was organic, it was genuine. I enjoyed it, it was fun. And I want to say to everybody here that are listening that, or just remind ourselves that we have a superpower and we have a great tool with us. And that is that our, our artwork is what is introducing us to these new audiences. And it doesn't matter their background or how different we think we are from each other. They want to know us and they want to know about the work and they want about the work and they want to talk to us. So I think it helped me gain confidence and also break that stereotype I had in terms of, you know, being different 
uh, with other people. And the third pro and last one, and I love that one, is that maybe it's because I'm from out of town. Mm -hmm. I feel that the gallery really goes above and beyond when when I am there, they really treat me like the star of the show. Mm -hmm. They are really great about organizing, first of all, a great opening. They usually have live music, they have drinks, they have a dirt. Uh, they, it's like a party. It's really, really beautiful. So it's, it's nice to see that because I'm used to openings here in New York that are you know, because we have so many, they, they are a little more fast paced. There is really an event. And I love that. They make me feel like I'm the star of the night. And I want to say that that's how we all should be treated. You know, we all should be treated like the stars because it's our artwork, which is being introduced to this new audience. So, so let's just, you know, enjoy the moment. So in brief, it's if it has been worth it, it totally has been worth it for me. I, I would do it all over again. Great, that, that's really great. And everybody I knew in San Antonio, I sent to that opening and was glad to be uh, a part of, of the support. So it's part of our Thank group you, Ellen. Of, yes, I met your friends. They were awesome, I love them. Right, right, right. And they were all Russian and, and they were middle, you know, that they, so it was a, a very good match between them and you and they're always looking forward to you coming back so you established another place uh, where your artwork gets out there so I think it was great all around and when you had a newspaper a, a journal cover from that magazine I sent that out to everybody you know the, thank the link you. to it yeah so that's that's so great they enjoyed it so thank you very much okay Bonnie uh, Bonnie Epstein's going to tell us a little bit about showing has changed the direction of her work and, and the idea of um, how that has influenced her by showing outside of the city. Go ahead, Bonnie. You have to unmute yourself. I've exhibited outside quite a few times and each exhibition and each venue had its own dynamic and I got important insights from each and every one of them. And I agree very much with what Sandra just said and what Gail just said. It's like an experience like you're a star outside. They sort of look at artists as, woo, here no one pays attention. But in small regional uh, art centers and whatever, it's fantastic. There are parties there. I mean, and they really pay attention to what you show. But I've been lucky. And for the most part, I've been lucky because I've dealt with regional art centers and small museums across the country. And my experience with small galleries has been really good also. But I have a really strange background because I grew up making things and I never went to art school. I became an, a teacher. I taught in New York City public schools and I continued to make things. And for a while, for quite a while, I designed and made things that I sold in boutiques and museum shops. And eventually, I began designing embroidery for the knitwear industry and for garment manufacturers as a freelancer. And during all those years, many of those years, I was a pretty active member in a group called Textile Study Group of New York. In 1997, it was the very first time I submitted work to an art exhibition. My work was selected for a traveling exhibition and that experience was my art school. Curators from the Museum of the, um, from the American Craft Museum, now the Museum of Art and Design, offered Textile Study Group a gallery for a month 
if we could provide a curated exhibition of our members' work. So the TSGNY steering committee accepted the offer and the members broke into committees and we developed a proposal and we hired a curator. Actually, Janet Kaplos, who was at the time the senior editor of Art in America magazine. And because the TSGNY steering committee decided this is probably going to be an important show, we're opening in an important place, we have a good curator, we'll make this a traveling show. So it was planned accordingly. The name of the show was Nine by Nine by Three, a special nine inch by nine inch by three inch wooden box was designed and the box functioned as the format of the show, the shipping container for each of our works and the frame for each of our works. Everything had to fit into that box and not move out of that box. Um, nine by nine by three was selected specifically because a certain number of nine inch by nine inch by three inch boxes could fit exactly in a certain size UPS shipping carton. So it was just really carefully planned. That decision, along with the size of the gallery we were offered, gave us the opportunity to select up to 54 pieces of work. And we knew that we had, when we were shipping, we would have X number of cartons arriving at the place. And the committee, the committee wrote to galleries and museums across the country and offered them this show. And amazingly, 11 venues accepted, starting with the New York State Museum and everything all across the country. Uh, Bonnie, when we, were, when we were talking, you said that how the show had changed the direction of your work showing That's, outside. Yeah. Yeah. I was a part of the planning committee and I had no intention of submitting work because I wasn't an artist. I was a crafter. I mean, not a hobbyist crafter, but I didn't consider myself an artist, but I was encouraged to enter that exhibition and I entered two pieces and one of them was selected. And I was like shocked. And that was the beginning of my starting to think of myself as someone who made art. And from then I, you know, was really tired of the sweets embroidery stuff I had been doing for the garment industry. And I started experimenting with paper. That exhibition was the first time I used my own photograph in a piece of work. It was the first time I embroidered on paper because I embroidered on my photographs. I stitched the work into the box and I started thinking of working from then on making art out of paper. And I used recycled papers, I used maps, I used all, and I wanted to- So, so would so you say that this pushed you in a, a different direction? Pushed me into doing my own work, to thinking of making art. So it's and definitely I a pro. Started, hmm? It definitely was a pro in exhibiting yeah. outside. Yeah. It was a pro. My next experience was, you know, I started working with paper and rat wire and metal screening and stitching things together to make shadows and whatever. And I'm gonna, I'm, gonna like, I'm, I'm gonna interrupt you here because I think that we are heading at the end of the meeting and I don't know whether um, Eileen wants to open it up for any questions. I have one quick thing. Go ahead. The next piece I was the next piece I worked on was huge and it was chosen for a museum exhibition that would travel. And like Monroe said, I had to have it crated. That crate cost absolute fortune as did shipping. The museum indeed 
um, didn't cover shipping to it, but they did deliver it to my door of my apartment four years later when the exhibition came back. Mm -hmm. I finally decided, when I realized how much effort went into shipping and packing, I changed the way I worked. I made it smaller, I made it able to fold, I made it able to roll so that it would fit into small. And then I discovered, then I realized, what am I doing? I'm working with the thought preconceived, you know, it must fit into a certain size box. And so I realized that if I really wanted to explore further, I had to stop thinking of shipping and start thinking of my art. And I stopped thinking of where I'm gonna ship. Okay. That's it, <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> Thank you all four of you for helping me um, present this topic. And I give it back uh, to Fran or Eileen. Okay, so um, it is now officially 11 o'clock. I know, I saw so that. the meeting is officially over. Are people interested in staying for a few more minutes for Q&A? Yes, I hear Audrey saying yes. Some people are shaking their heads. Okay, um, so I think I'm going to uh, spotlight the panel and then people can I'm um, just unmute yourself and uh, jump in and ask any kind of questions. What about have. insurance when you're sh shipping? Oh yes, yeah, someone had a specific question yeah, for Monroe. Not just insurance about, shipping, anybody, but insurance everybody. showing I, as well. I've insured when I ship or I've used an agent and they've handled all the insurance. I once didn't insure. It was the Santa Fe Gallery and they knew the shippers so well. They said, don't worry about it. They have long experience with them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ship without using insurance. Things no. get managed too easily. You have to okay, I, I don't ship with insurance. You don't. And I, I, do. I know. And I ship these great big things that I, you know, sell for a reasonable price. And, but I've been doing this for 25 years. All I've right. never lost anything okay. at all. I've saved a ton of money. I and <laughs> I, I, I will lose something sometime. But okay. I'm going to say that's the price I pay for having gone without insurance all this time. That's interesting. I would agree with Monroe. <laughs> Like when I ship just, you know, not, not for a solo show when it's 15, 20 pieces, but if it is like just one painting through FedEx, I usually do not put insurance. And that's because I have heard so many horror stories about how hard mm -hmm. it is to get any money back from, you know, mm -hmm. if anything happens that when I put that in a balance, I'm like, you know, I would rather make the work again and take the risk if anything happens. Mm -hmm. So far, nothing has ever happened. But um, I just feel that they will do anything in their power to avoid paying anything back. And also whatever they pay back would be far from what the retail cost is. So I just take the risk. Maybe I'm doing a mistake, but I'm, I'm, I take the risk. Well, Monroe <laughs> has 25 years of taking that risk. <laughs> well, can I just jump in here and say, I'm thrilled for all your good fortune. I had a painting damaged and it was insured and it was paid for. And that was a great thing. So before we totally dismiss insurance, um, I just want to say that there there's another side to it. But um, how did I you insure it? What 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 company or what? Uh, well, I have had things uh, both insured by the postal company that was years ago uh by fedex and um yes. by private insurance company it's a long time FedEx ago and in another a, city fedex only does a thousand dollars but That's i discovered i discovered last year when i had to send something that i had sold for eight thousand dollars that my own insurance policy which was a business liability policy uh through uh fractured atlas did cover the insurance. I called them and they said yes. So I didn't have to take out extra insurance in that case. Oh, Marianne, that's great. Marianne, so, I want to say FedEx will insure for greater than a thousand if you enter it yourself. If you go to them and have it set it set it up to ship it, it's only a limit of a thousand. But I wanted to insure something for more, so I had to enter it myself. 
What do you mean enter it yourself? In the computer, I went online. I was there at FedEx, but I could have just done it at home or whatever, going online, not having them enter it. When I went online and I insured it, I think it was, I can't remember if it was two or 4,000. I can't remember what the, the amount was. Really? And they would let you into their computer to do it or? It's not their computer. It's online when you go online to someone's site. Yeah, that was my experience as well. I think yeah. I was... FedEx site? FedEx. Yeah, I was at FedEx. And you yeah. who's who speaking, form? by the way? Yvette. Hi. Yvette. Hi. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've never. Monroe, um, I have a question for Gail. And I, Monroe, I know you lived in Europe, so you had the contacts. But Gail, you didn't, and you seem to still have a, a whole world of contact outside of the US. And I'm just curious, how, how, how? <laughs> okay, but the show in Germany, I did a residency at SVA, mm. the School of Visual Arts, okay. and it's an international residency. So there was a German artist and he invited me to exhibit with him in Germany. Um, in Italy, there was this wild, crazy curator that some people probably may have known who um, was looking for artists from the United States. And we were all sort of part of this small circle. Um, and I think I grew up a little bit in a global community. And so I just naturally try and reach out to and welcome people who are from different parts of the world. So I think that's part of it as well. You also can apply. But when you apply for an exhibit in Europe, you have to be really careful because there's some. Yes. Um, and the show in Vermont, I spent two years sending out a proposal to museums and galleries, getting bites. It was during the pandemic. Then serendipity happened and I met this curator and she encouraged me to apply and I applied and it got accepted. So. I don't have an exact answer other than the person from SDA. And I think one European show probably makes you more interesting to other European shows. But Monday, yeah, I agree. Okay. <laughs> I, I think it's really tricky showing abroad because you have to really vet these people and be sure that um, you can trust them. I'm, I've been in Italy a lot and seen, I've heard horror stories in Italy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'd ever show there because you don't get things back <laughs> and you don't get your money back. So it, that can be difficult, but yeah. I, I do have a good relationship with the people I show with in England. Oh, I just want to say one other thing and that is I'm definitely with you, Gail. I'm, I care about people seeing my work and, yes. um, and communicating with other people. And I think art is a gift to the world. And the more you can give it, the better. <laughs> There's a tendency to uh, talk about money as, as a, a number, as an amount, as a value. But in fact, if you had to pay a publicist to get you an article, in the front page of an art magazine in a foreign country, you wouldn't have enough money to do that. If you had to do many of the gestures that are the results of showing in other countries, they add up to being very, very valuable in terms of connections. If you had a publicist or an agent who was taking you to museums and, and um, institutions, you would have to pay that person. And then you are making the connection directly yourself one-on-one -on -one with these people that is of enormous value so it's not just that you know the shipping costs this much and you have to sell that much to offset it how much would it have also attributed to the value uh, when i was running a gallery in soho i specialized in foreign artists and many of them would come in and say to me i need the show and i would say why and they would say because if i can have in my cv that i showed in new york Everything changes for me. And I said, well, that, you know, it must happen the same way for us when we go abroad. People look at you differently. Mm -hmm. So, um, <coughs> sorry, sorry to interrupt here. Um, I actually need to leave, but Eileen uh, has agreed to keep uh, the Zoom going till 1115. So anybody who wants to stay and continue the discussion, um, 
is welcome to. Okay. So, have a good um, one, Fran. And thank I actually you know, have a question for Monroe. Um, before, before I go, I just realized that we didn't announce the um, the the last meeting of our of our um, season, which is June twenty third. Am I getting that date right, Eileen? Please check me. So I think our our next meeting will be June twenty third, and um, that will be the last meeting until the fall. We are not planning to meet over the summer, uh, which has been our longstanding tradition. Um, and that's June. Do. I'm sorry, June what? Twenty third. Yes. Yeah. And we'll okay. we'll have the dates for September soon. Yes, we'll we'll have the fall dates coming soon. <clears throat> all right. So uh, thank you all, and um, continue on. Good. Allie, you were saying something. <clears throat> Uh, take care. Yeah, just I wanted to ask Monroe because I I do that shipping with the container, the wood, you know, the wooden container also. And they I've done the pink, you know, the pink from Home Depot, the insulation, and that's really nice packing. But you said that you did multiple pieces in a in one package. What do you do in between the paintings? Is it another layer of pink or is it something else? Um, it's either pink or cardboard. And the paintings are wrapped and completely dry. Right. Individually wrapped paintings separated by cardboard or insulation, which yeah. you could also use the white insulation, which is thinner, yeah. for in between the paintings, right. as well as around it as well. But the pink makes it so much easier to box. And then you it, just bring it to the lumber yard. Yeah, yeah, and my lumber yard also. I've I've had that done where I bring it, but it's much better to bring them something that's just ready to. Yeah, but they can build the something crib. around. Yeah, you know? um, I I don't know if uh, any of you guys have had this issue, and you were saying Italy is the worst, and I I have done lots of things with Italy, and they have so many strikes. There's airplane strikes, there's airport strikes, there's strikes with the shipping companies. I don't know, that country likes to strike more than any other country I've ever. But, but I, think, I think also in Italy, there's some unethical situations that come up. There well, are. Okay. We both, we both love and but, hate but Italy, right? For right. unethical, but, you have to go but to I Indonesia. Love, I love showing you the in, Indonesia is the worst, but I have a studio in Indonesia and I live in Bali sometimes, you know what I mean? But but I once shipped 12 gallons of molding paste and gesso and whatever, 12 gallons of something to uh, Bali for my studio. Uh, it was gonna be a few months and they made it to the dock, to the wharf in Bali and then, hmm, they disappeared. A lot of third world <laughs> countries stuff just, it says they made it, it, they check it off delivered, you know, to the, to the airport, to the dock, but then it's all of a sudden it's gone. So I, to, I am shocked Monroe that you don't insure your stuff. I mean, I, have a question. I, I, pa I pack it, you know, as, as you're saying, I pack it really carefully. So, uh, it, it, if I'm sending it FedEx express, you know, air, that's true. There's not much data. It's right. What could happen? Right. Or D DHL is very careful. They I really are. Yeah. I'll be insured. Having a package picked up tomorrow. But just a, being a part, being a part of the art and embassies program, I've been involved with six oh. pickups. Okay. We're through Atelier Four, and that's another uh, overseas yeah. shipper. And they they come and they take it, and then they bring it to their facility, and then they they pack it. So, um, and everything's arrived there, obviously. But um, that's another way of using instead of FedEx or using DHL to use a, a shipper like Atelier 4. But when was the last time you did an embassy shipment? And was it before COVID? Yeah, it was before COVID. However, uh, it's very active. Um, other people, because they call me and they say that I've been approached to do it. And, and they're reluctant, but it's like the same exact thing. They come and they pick it up, they, they, they wrap it, and then they take it to their facility. I, I just need I to say a... one little thing that happens. I shipped a huge sculpture. I, I mostly do paintings. I hu a huge sculpture. They Two guys came and picked it up with five others to load it on the truck. 
they left for um, Chicago and it never, the truck never made it there. Um, <laughs> and it wasn't Atelier for, I don't remember, somebody else, the museum sent the truck with the guys and they found, and then the company sent other people out to Chicago to look for it because this was at least eight or 10 years ago before tracking, you know, the GPS tracking. And they found the truck with the piece in it abandoned on the side of the road and found out the guys had gone to do some drugs oh. and got messed this, up. This, this is very extreme. This, <laughs> I, I, I doubt mean, whether I mean, you know, you know, Ellen, Ellen, could you put let, that let, Italian let, name let, on let, the chat? Can please? I interrupt just <laughs> for a minute? Oh. I just and also let, Peggy wants to make a comment. I've been dying to hear it. Yeah. Oh. I just want to give some information. I'm going to put in the chat the name of a shipper that I use and pay for in Brooklyn, who is fabulous. It costs, but Great. never any problem. It was worth it. In the chat. For national or international, put that in the chat also. That's then. what I'm going to do. Thanks. I have a question. The thing is, um, it, it, it depends on, shipping has gotten so expensive. Lumber's gotten expensive, everything. In, in the past um, two years. And so what you used to be, I used to ship a whole uh, show to Denver for three or $400. You know, the whole thing would go out there, but you, you can't do that anymore. And so the costs are really pretty high. And if you do use a shipper, like I would like to get the name of Gail Shipper, but it's, it's um, you know, it depends upon um, you know, how much you can afford that. I want to add something very quickly in regards to shipping. Uh, I have used Atelier Port. They are fantastic. I highly recommend it. Um, always get an estimate for at least three shippers because I have seen, mm -hmm. I have seen difference of twice the price. So don't go for the first one that you find. And the second suggestion I have is always ask, you know, Ask the gallery or the other venue yeah, if they are willing to split the shipping. <laughs> I have done it, and my deal with the gallery right now in San Antonio is they always we always split the shipping. It's not like I pay for the work going in and they pay for the work coming back. It's, it's not like that. Like if, if I ship the work, it goes 50-50. And when they ship back, it goes 50-50. And I think it's fair because when we ship the work, 15, 20 pieces, and if they sell half of the show, then you know, then the the shipping back of less pieces, or maybe I sell everything. Hopefully, you know. So always ask. It doesn't you know Ooh. doesn't hurt to ask. And let's try to get to, be, uh, to get that normalized. That galleries and other venues are responsible for at least half of the shipping cost. I think is the fairer thing to do. Mm -hmm. And Peggy, what wait, I feel bad. I've seen you, sh Peggy. Yes, um, I have a question. I think it was uh, for I think it was for you, Monroe. You had mentioned that you put down the cost of the actual materials when you're shipping. Is that true? I do. Okay. So, and you insure. This is my little that, dark secret. No, I don't insure. But then, don't. if something happens, do you get the money back based on the material, or do you have a section what its actual value because if you you know, I think you were saying the material is based because of the cost of going into a country well a lot a lot of customs duties are 20% of the value of your shipment so if you send some if you're going to sell something for $10,000 that's the price of your work then you're going to be paying $2,000 in customs duties which is a lot on top of your shipping and everything else. Each direction, if it comes back to you. What? $2,000 each direction if, yeah, it if it comes back, back. to you. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just, I need to go, but I can make Cheryl the host if you want to close, if you're okay. I just it. want to finish with what Monroe, uh, Monroe is saying. So if the, you lose it, it's only based on material or you, uh, you can do an actual yeah, value. Yeah, yeah, Peggy, no. Peggy, this is customs duty, not insurance. No, no, I, that, now I know, that I know now. But now where do you put the, based on value in your insurance? Uh, I don't insure. I see, okay. 
Yeah, I only use DHL or FedEx and in 25 years, I haven't lost anything. Okay. And everything's packed to the hilt when I send it. So there's no damage, you know, and that's just like the way I do it. Lucky. Okay, I, 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 we can continue with this topic maybe at the... Well, I'm, I unfortunately have to say goodbye, but yeah. everyone too. Eileen, Eileen, I'm sorry. I, I have to go too. So I'm going to have to end the recording. Okay. And okay. Get out. This was a fabulous topic. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Eileen, thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.